tactical empathy is perceiving what your counterpart's worldview is. Hi everyone, I'm Don of the Black Swan Group. We've all had those challenging coworkers, those difficult coworkers. Everybody's got them, right? We got them in the office every day. Those people that charge forward without collaborating and just take over. Those people that don't contribute at all, make more work for everybody else. There seems to exist one in every team. When I worked on the Las Vegas Police Department in their crisis negotiation team, I had a whole team of really good people who I worked well with, they worked well with me, and I had a great supervisor, and I started to get concerned because if you can't identify the difficult coworker on your team, maybe it's you. I was worried. I'm going to give you today three techniques that you can use to deal with any kind of challenging coworker that you're facing, any kind of challenging boss that you're facing, any kind of challenging subordinate or difficult person at work or in your space. The first technique is listening. I know that sounds basic. I know that it sounds like kind of cliche. Everybody says we need to listen better, right? We're not great listeners. No one is. We try to be. Some of us consider ourselves good listeners, but the reality is most of us listen to the point where our self monologue takes over when we get the gist of what somebody's saying. What we want to do is strive to listen for our counterpart's internal logic our counterpart's emotion, our counterpart's uh, reason for saying what they're saying. Ultimately, in a real difficult conversation, we want to be all the way up in empathetic listening where we're listening completely and totally with a lot of effort to our counterpart. That is powerful in and of itself. And that alone will help improve your relationships and it'll make your counterpart want to talk to you more when they realize that they're being heard and understood. That segues nicely into my second technique with your counterparts. And this one's a little harder because whenever we're talking about difficult people, whenever we're talking about challenging coworkers or bosses or anybody in your space, you have to stay curious. And the one thing that we're usually not is curious about why they're saying what they're saying. But if we can use genuine curiosity when we're dealing with these people, It'll help you listen better. It'll help you build to our third technique, which I'm going to talk about in a minute. And you approach these conversations assuming you have something to learn. And you'll find out that even people you've worked with for a really long time or worked for for a really long time, you think you have them all figured out. You think you know everything you need to know to get through the day with them. If you turn your curiosity on, you're going to learn things every day about them that you didn't know. Because no matter how closely we work with people, no matter how closely we uh, engage in our team, we're not always in the same room as these people. We're not always on the same calls as these people. So things happen when you're not there. You don't have any idea what those things are. That's why you have to stay curious. There's also a benefit of staying curious in as much as, remember when I said, You'll have that deep sigh when they come in your office, or you'll just bristle when you see them walking toward you. Okay, if you stay curious, it is far more difficult to be angry or triggered or any other thing because you're engaged in listening and being curious about what that other person is saying and, more importantly, what they're not saying. In my world as a private investigator, I've used these skills to listen to people who other people couldn't even establish contact with. And I showed genuine curiosity for how this was affecting them and their world, the pressures it was causing. I really wanted to know why they weren't making themselves available. And then as I listened, as I turned my curiosity on, I found that they reached out to me. They had not been heard. They hadn't been understood by anybody else who would try to reach out to them. And I have now a long-term relationship with these people because I used those skills. Want a more personal, easier to follow training experience? Go to the Black Swan Group page. 
and sign up for coaching with me. The third technique for today, tactical empathy. You probably read it in the book. If you haven't read the book, read Never Split the Difference by Chris Voss. Tactical empathy is really the foundation for all of our skills. And all it really is, is some calibrated emotional intelligence. And a lot of people trip up when you start talking about empathy. They're like, ah, that's soft stuff. No, sympathy is feeling what other people feel. Tactical empathy is perceiving what your counterpart's worldview is, perceiving what dynamics and motivations there are, and then verbalizing it back to them. The way we do that is by listening well and remaining genuinely curious. It's got to be genuine. Practice curiosity. Practice listening. And you will build to tactical empathy. And your counterpart is going to know that you understand. You don't have to say, I understand. When you use tactical empathy, when you verbalize back to your counterpart that which they are giving to you in both words and actions, they are going to feel heard and understood in a way that they probably never have before in the office, probably in a way they never have before in any workspace. And they're going to reciprocate that back to you. That's what's important. All of a sudden, now that you're listening on a, on a much higher level, now that you're genuinely curious about what makes your counterpart tick, what's their motivations, why did they say that? When you verbalize that back, when you utilize tactical empathy, they're going to reciprocate back to you and they're going to be ready to hear what you have to say. These three techniques are the kinds of things that make a long-term relationship better with your difficult coworker. You may well be, if you utilize these techniques, the only one in your office that effectively works with that difficult employee, with that difficult boss, because all you've done is listen to them. You've made the conversations about them. So they want to work with you. They want to collaborate with you and they don't want to bother you no more. That's where these techniques pay off huge. So give them a try. Everyone has a story, right? About that challenging coworker, that one that just made you roll your eyes. Put it in the comments below. So remember, first, listen, active listening, curiosity, remain genuinely curious, and get to tactical empathy. Practice your tactical empathy. What happens when you're doing those three things and the conversation goes off the rail or your counterpart gets triggered, your coworker gets triggered, and now they're raising their voice at you or they're falling back in to the negative behaviors they have before. I'm gonna tell you how to do that. But wait, there's more. Wanna learn everything you can about the Black Swan Group, how to improve your relationships and how to make more money? Go to our website and sign up for one of our live events or click on the links below. We would really like to see you in person and these things flow better in person. I'm gonna give you some strategies for how to practice all of these things, really unlock your relationships at work. You wanna see how? I'll explain everything. Click right over here.